Hello lovelies, how are you all doing today? I hope you're well. I think <laughs> I might be certifiable because I'm about to get stuck in, I'm just sorting first. I'm about to get oh, la, la, stuck in to a whole load of steam pressing <laughs> on a really hot day. Right, that's what I wanted first, all the little hankies, because they're an easy start. But, um, what can you do? Two things. One, it is marginally cooler in the flat than outside at the moment. That will change, <clears throat> yeah, that will change in another 24 hours or so. I'm right on that cusp where the flat becomes hotter than outside, but you know, for now. Anyway, it's, I can't garden at the moment. <laughs> Let's just dive straight into this conversation. I can't garden at the moment because the things I need to do, right, okay, <laughs> back it up, back it up. In previous years, in a normal year, by the time I get to, I don't know what the date is today, about the 12th of August, by the time I get to this point in the year, it's a sort of, I'm into a maintenance period. So watering, preferably not every day. You know, like last year, I didn't do any watering after, I think I did some watering in May, but then I didn't do any watering pretty much the rest of the year because we were getting regular rain. Um, yeah, so in a normal year, I'd get to this time of the year and it would be basically weeding, cutting the grass, trimming my edges and harvesting. And that's it. Yay! And it's that lovely, really rewarding time in the garden where all the hard work was done in March, April, May and just into June couple of more pushes sort of in July but generally speaking <clears throat> all that hard work was done and now I'm just I'm having nice relaxed days sessions in the garden by the way these hang I'm doing a load of hankies um, they're all lovely vintage ones more of that later yeah so that that's that's obviously not the case this year and it sort of brings me on to what I'm doing today so bear with me because some of this is going to be a bit of repetition but I'm sort of I'm sort of putting the final emphasis on it if you like so I'm not having tinker time I'm still having just pure and simple hard work and as, as anyone who has to water by hand with cans will know, it quickly becomes boring. Not only is it boring, but it's painful. It's, it's just not pleasant. Plus the walk there and back, I know, blah, blah, blah. I've been mean, on my knees all the time. When I was saying the other day, when I was having the chatty catch up about if I'd known how this year was gonna go, if I'd known that back in January, honestly, I wouldn't have done the garden this year. Simple as that. And I mentioned in that video about how it's not worth it. And I really hated saying that. I hated admitting that to myself. Because over the years, I've heard people say, oh, you know, it's not worth doing your own garden because the value of the produce, what you get out, would be cheaper to buy. And for years, I have absolutely said, no, that's not true if you do it a certain way. You know, if you grow your garden, I've got another hanky somewhere. Here we go to mop my brow because it's going to get really steamy in here. If you, if you garden with minimal expenditure, then it's so worth doing. If you're saving your own seeds, so you're not buying seeds, if you're not buying loads of compost, but you're using the earth that you've been given, all these things, you can pretty much, apart from the rent for your allotment site, or no rent if it's your back garden, 
you can virtually garden for free. So this produce is free. But, of course, there is your labour. Now, in the past, I've said, and I stand by this, that I kind of don't... I don't see it as too much labour because, I mean, it's work, of course, but because it's such an enjoyable thing to do, because I have such a lovely time down there because of other people, you know, I've always said this is my gym, it's my church, it's my social club. I don't even notice the work. So it's worth doing. This year, mm-mm. I'm going to be glad of every single bit of harvest I get out, of course, but again, back to what I was saying in that other video, and it's going to lead into a conversation I had a couple of days ago, which has changed things again. It's that thing that, excuse me, from the beginning of March right until right now, <clears throat> after the lavender bags had been made and sold at the very beginning of March, pretty much... <laughs> Every day that I've woken up that when I haven't been, you know, COVID or haven't had that bad back, pretty much every day that I've woken up, I've thought, oh God, I've got to do the garden. There's something else to plant. I need to go and water, duh, duh, duh. And so this is what I mean about this year. It hasn't been worth it. Purely because of <clears throat> the obstacles, the drought, these these days at the moment where it's just too hot to be in the garden, never mind the drought, you know, even if we'd had a load of rain last night, oh, wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah, even if we'd had a load of rain last night that would have made the garden perfect for working today, I wouldn't be out there today because it's too hot. So all these factors combined mean that, yeah, on the days when I can be out there, I've been out there and vlogging <laughs> myself And that's what I mean about, you, you cannot, unless you're retired, hang on, there's some exceptions to this. Unless you are retired and have your pension coming in, or if you have some sort of private income coming in, or you have some sort of benefit, I mean, I know life on benefits is not fun, but if you've got something else from somewhere coming in, yes, you can be in the garden seven days a week. But I can't. <laughs> it, it, that does not pay for itself. Now, of course, I get a few videos out of the garden. That's great. And that does bring a little bit of income in from YouTube adverts, but not, not enough to pay the bills, not enough to live on. So, yeah, it's, it sort of came to a crunch the other day when... I can't remember how it came about. I remember how the conversation came about, but you know, it was another morning. I'd got up and I thought, oh, for God's sake, garden again. <laughs> I'm so done with it. I'm so done with it occupying every single day. I, I want a different, it's not a different life. But there are other things I want to do with my time and my life. I want to be able to read a book <laughs> every now and again. Not a whole book, not in one sitting, but anyway. So yeah, I've been feeling a bit grumpy about it all and there's still one big job left to do, which would normally have been, part of it would have been done at the end of May. I'm talking about the brassicas. So at the end of May, broad beans and oh, replace fluids, <laughs> broad beans and the garlic come out at the end of May. I would normally immediately follow those with some brassicas. Then, towards the end of July, I have the onions out and I immediately follow those with two more lots of brassicas. So by now it's four brassica beds. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, when the new potatoes come out, that also becomes another bed for brassicas. That's around about now normally. So we got to the end of May took out the garlic, took out the broad beans, and we'd had a lot of rain in May, so <clears throat> pretty much the second and third week of May were almost non-stop rain. 
I was getting frustrated because of the rain. Can you imagine it? Oh, I wish I hadn't. I, you know, I'd love to bring it back. But yeah, <clears throat> we'd had a ton of rain, which is why I was worried about lifting my garlic, worrying that they would have rotted, but they hadn't, thank goodness. And conditions were pretty much nigh on perfect. Warm days, warm soil, wet soil, not, not waterlogged, but yeah, really good and moist. And I was like, brilliant. First two weeks of June, I'm going to get my brassicas in, I'll get my tomatoes, I'll get everything planted. And we all know what happened by now. <laughs> I got COVID. So when I did start gardening again, I think it was about the 19th of June, by which time it had started to get warm, hot, the ground had started to dry up a bit. And my absolute priority was you know getting my tomatoes in getting the squash in because they're my really important harvests getting the beans in what have you what have you and we got to the middle of july and i've got everything planted yay <laughs> except for brassicas and i went to tickle the broad bean bed the ex, by now ex broad bean bed because i was clearing it of the old broad beans it was rock hard absolutely rock hard yeah it was the middle of july so six weeks six and a half seven weeks after all the rain in may and clearing the bed of produce it had turned to rock and i thought oh just wait for a bit of rain but also that's when things started to get really 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 hot and i thought you know what we're not going to get any rain i'm going to have to break ground without any rain, with the help of any rain. And I thought, you know what? That's fine. I've done that in the past. However, I've not done it in 38 degrees in the past. I've done it in 22 degrees. So as the temperature was climbing and climbing and climbing, I just thought, you're gonna have to leave it, Vivi. Leave it another week. Just give, give it another week. Let the temperature cool down a bit. Look, the bottom line is, the temperatures haven't cooled, we haven't had any rain. Um, those beds, excuse me, sorry I'm mopping my brow, but it, it really is quite steamy in here. Those beds, the ex-garlic bed for instance, the other day, I had my fork out to get the new potatoes out and I thought, let's go and just see. I tried to bang it in, it bounced straight off. <laughs> I couldn't even get my fork in. I tried jumping on it with both feet, it wouldn't go in. Can't get a fork in the ground. So, I was kind of stressing about it, thinking, oh, and I was thinking, well, okay, at least, you know where I've got the two X, now X onion beds. Maybe I can use them. Um, because at least where the onion roots have been, they will have slightly kept the soil open, just slightly. But then I was getting worried because they're all in modules still. Now I've got, they're in the modules and I forgot to show you this in the tour. They're next to the Coco de Pampol. They're under a shade net. So when I've been watering, what I've been doing is kind of slightly over watering them to just fill up the trays that the module pots are sitting in in the hopes that that would be enough to keep them alive and it turns out that has been enough to keep them alive because I saw a neighbour a couple of days ago and, and I was talking about the whole brassica situation and saying I may not get to plant purple sprouting broccoli but never mind because the last two years I've missed the harvest anyway <laughs> two years on the run I've missed the harvest for whatever reason and he said oh have you got spare plants in that case can I scrounge some and I said yeah yeah of course there may be rubbish, I haven't looked at them for ages, so I, I took off the, um, the shade netting and lo and behold, they were just about alive. So I made it that in the onion beds. But this, <laughs> this is kind of how this conversation ties into me ironing. I always get there in the end. We just go around a few houses in the meantime. <clears throat> so on, which is the right side? I was iron on the reverse. 
but when I was in the garden on Monday morning, I wasn't down as early as I was going down during the last heat wave as opposed to heat. In the UK, heat wave is classified as, I think it's three consecutive days over 28. I think that's how we classify it. Um, so it's been hot. We've had some days that are 30, but if the next day is 27, it doesn't count as a heat wave, stupid. Anyway, during the heat wave, I was getting to the garden for sort of 7 a.m. On this occasion, on I think it was Monday, I was there at about 9.30. <clears throat> so I was doing my watering, doing my watering. Trudge, 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 grumble, grumble, grumble. <laughs> <laughs> really hating it at the moment just hating the watering not the garden I don't hate my garden and at one point I I just stopped I had the empty cans I was on my way back to one of the tanks I just stopped and I went oh for god's sake you know or something I kind of let off a bit of steam shall we say and I didn't realize one of my neighbors was there um our lovely Karen who is not the girls next door, not that next door, but she's next door but two to me. And she was sort of stood there doing exactly the same as me, stood with washing cans, looking up and just going, oh. <laughs> so I said, morning, how are you doing? And we both sort of commiserated with each other about, you know, just being fed up of logging cans every day. Honestly, unless you do it, um, uh, like the weight, the weight of those cans when the water's in it and it, it's just all that weight's going through your knees and I know people have said in the past why don't you put the cans into your water wheelbarrow and wheel it I'm still having to lift and push weight and the wheelbarrow doesn't get around the corners da 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 anyway yeah <laughs> unless you've been there you've no idea but so we were commiserating a bit and then she said that um She'd got four courgettes in parts so really big things. She said, but that I haven't managed to get in yet. She said, because I don't have a bed for them. I can't break this ground. I don't know what I'm going to do. So it turned into a bit of a <laughs> misery, commiseration session. And I was saying to her exactly the same with regards to my brassicas. And I was calculating that with the ex-garlic bed and the ex-broad bean bed, because I know how long it took me to break ground in the spring for the potato beds, I said it's, each bed is gonna be at least two days work. So that's four days, at least a day, you know, with the planting and, and actually I think it might take longer because they're so solid. It could be the best part of a week just to plant 20 cabbages, <laughs> you know, 10 in each bed. And I sort of, the more I was chatting to her, I said, you know what, I don't think it's worth it. I just don't think it's worth it this year. I've already half killed myself to do the garden. Um, maybe, maybe it's time to call time on the garden. <laughs> I mean, not completely, I'm watering, harvesting, all that. But for the sake of a few head of brassica, and this is how the conversation came up, that... I said, I would rather be at home in the course of a week. The things I could do for my shop would generate income to buy those brassicas in the winter and more besides. And she said, oh, what do you sell? <laughs> I said, oh, a yeah. bit of sewing, bit of vintage stuff. And she said, oh, so do I. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> I've got a neighbour who sells vintage stuff too. Very different to me. And she's at a different stage. She's just, um, she's really just starting out. She's been gathering stock and photographing it. Because I said, oh, what plugin do you use? And she's like, huh? Because <laughs> I use WooCommerce as a plugin on my web. But she was kind of looking at maybe doing Etsy, that sort of thing. So the more we chatted and she was saying, what do you do? And I said, well, what, this is what I do at the moment, plus, you know, bits of some whatever. I said, but this is what I want to develop and I've got everything ready, but I just don't have the time. And the more we talked, the more we talked, the more I thought, 
what am I doing killing myself in this garden? I want to go home and I want to do this other part of my life. I want to get on with my shop, but not just, you know, the books and the vintage stuff. I have put a look, look, oh, you can't see from there, can you? There are a load more books have gone in and some bits and pieces. I've got stacks more there to go in. But it's things like, you know, the scrap packs I've talked about and more than all of that, stuff all piled up here. I keep sorting and checking through. You know, my, the vintage haberdashery shop that I've been talking about for ages. And I can't, you know what, I can't stand in YouTube land. <laughs> <laughs> so so sweaty. What I can't stand in YouTube land is people who say I'm going to do X Y Z, and then they never do it. And then three months later they say, Oh, but now I'm going to do A B C. And three months down the line they haven't done that either. And then they say, oh, I'm going to do I J K. Basically, people who say I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that, and never do it. I'm not one of those people, if I say I'm going to do something, I am going to do it. It's just sometimes it takes much longer than I wanted it to or than I anticipated. So yeah, I have to say a huge thank you to Karen actually on that day for A, for giving me my potty mouth. <laughs> Turns out she's got a potty mouth too, so that's fine. But more than anything, for just letting me let off steam actually that's what it was I was feeling really fed up I was feeling really sort of tied to the garden I was feeling like I was the garden slave um, in a way that I've never experienced before and I was really 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 at that kind of I'm just begrudging this now point and I, I don't want to feel like that um, you know, this is my last year in that garden. I really wanted to enjoy it as much as possible. And don't get me wrong, I've had tons of enjoyment there too. Absolutely tons of enjoyment this year. But overwhelmingly, if someone was to say to me, sum up your garden year in a couple of words, I would say sheer bloody slog. <laughs> That's that's the garden this year you know I can't help but wonder how how would it have been if we didn't have drought this year it would have been much easier how would it have been without these extreme heat weeks yep easier but you know what we didn't have that I plugged on because I got to the point almost of no return as in like I was saying, you know, I have to make the garden work because I've already spent too much time on it. And I'm glad I did because I am going to get produce. But, gosh, this is a very long-winded way of saying <clears throat> that, you know, ultimately you have to... You have to recognise, I think, when you're, you know, flogging a dead horse... Not that the garden is the dead horse, but say the brassicas. I am not, I am not gonna bust a gut. I'm just not, I'm, let's be, let's be sensible. I'm not gonna be crazy. I am not gonna bust a gut to dig out those couple of beds. There's absolutely no point in doing that to my body or my mind because you see, that's the other thing when you, I'm sure loads of you people know as well, anyone who's got arthritis and anything like that, the thing with, the thing with any sort of pain condition, chronic pain is, you can do it, you can grit your teeth and get it done, but then you might have three or four days afterwards where you pay for it by, not so much that I can't get back to the garden, but that there's so much inflammation and pain that I can't even think about doing anything else for three or four days. And I absolutely cannot afford to waste waste time on nursing my knees. So yeah, I think it's um I think it's a good decision. Like I said, I'll try and do the onion bed. I've just gotta say by the way, look at this cloth. This is so beautiful. Can you see it's like, hang on, let me come that side so I can get closer. 
it's like a little sampler of all different flowers and all these squares. Isn't it? Have I got it upside down for you? Oh, it's upside down. Never mind. You get the idea. Let me step back there. You see each little square filled with absolutely gorgeous, oops, out gorgeous little flower samples. There is, there is a stain on it, but right on this edge, I'm just hoping that when it goes into the shop and someone sees it, they think I can forgive that because it's so beautiful. So, <laughs> oh, I went all around the houses, didn't I again? Yeah, I, in the last couple of days, I've just started getting back to the shop. Haven't got back to sewing yet. I've got, I mean, I've got, down there, I've got a whole tray that must have about 400 patchwork pieces cut, ready for lavender bags. Last year, the lavender bags went on sale in March. I don't want to promise anything, but I'm going to do the lavender harvest in the next couple of weeks because we've been so hot it's gone over and it's ready for harvest and the idea is I get it dried and processed a bit sooner this year so that maybe 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 I can have lavender bags in the shop by I don't know November or so in time for Christmas gifting if, if anyone is still gifting after that last video and I was like let's all stop gifting <laughs> But yeah, hopefully in time for Christmas, which will be super organised of me. I'm never that organised normally. And yeah, it's just been a lovely, lovely couple of days of cleaning things, photographing. Gradually things are get going into the shop. But never mind that, there's also the other longer term projects, which will be for the shop and eventually the vintage haberdashery. I've done more photographing, I've done more, oh, excuse me, washing and pressing of lace. That's fun. Great long lengths of vintage lace washed and pressed, more of it. So yeah, I feel, I feel like there's a little bit of, there's a little bit of me coming back that got lost to the slog frankly it got lost to the slog and I'm also glad to be doing this because it is much more gentle work not that this is hard work because it's so hot but in terms of you know photographing and sitting at the computer and doing the back end of the shop all that it's gentle it's gentle work and I think I have to give myself a bit of grace for I think there are still some energy issues left over from the two viruses so yeah it's good stuff so glad I had that conversation with Karen and it was like a light bulb moment I was thinking it was, it was exactly that moment of going why am I going to flog myself for a week for 20 cabbages <laughs> I can buy them <laughs> yeah the, you know the, the point is this if you are physically more able than me and you know, we're not in a drought year, a heat year or whatever, then yes, growing your own is definitely worth it. If you can do, as I used to do, if you can do all the work for the garden in just two days, you can at the same time hold down a full-time job as I used to with nursing or use all that other time for shop, sewing, all those other things. It is possible with a couple of days hard work each week. But we all know, you know, as you get older, things start to break down it takes three or four days instead of two <laughs> this year I got to the stage where it was taking seven days a week and that just don't work so I realize I've been yapping on for a bit so I'm gonna um, round things up somewhat because also I have fingers crossed my last appointment with the respiratory consultant from the hospital. So going back to the viral pneumonitis I had at the end of January. <clears throat> now, the last time I saw her was face to face and I much prefer face to face. Even though it means getting the bus 
I just think face to face is so much easier. Anyway, it's not, it's over the telephone. So what I've done over the last few weeks since I last saw her, I've had more scans and stuff done, just, you know, checking, make sure everything's in the right direction. But what I've got is on my desk in the kitchen, I have a pin board, it's all my to-dos, but I've got a little bit pinned on there that is my questions for the consultant. Because even with all my experience um, dealing with medical professionals and being a medical professional, I still forget, oh, I wanted to ask that, this, that and the other. So literally every time something pops into my mind, I think, oh yeah, put it down, write it down so I can ask her. And in previous times when I've been up at the hospital for an appointment, I'm coming home on the bus and I think, oh, I forgot to ask, duh, duh, duh quickly write it in my notebook, transfer it to my list. So I've got my list ready to chat with her through. But what I'm hoping, hope, hope, hoping is that she discharges me today. I hope that she's going to say, I don't need to use the puffer anymore because frankly, it's, it's, it's 10 quid. It's to every puffer costs me 10 quid or what is prescription charging now? Is it 9.45 or something? It's best part of 10 quid. I could do without spending that. I feel well. Um, you know, I don't, yeah, I feel well. So I'm really hoping that today she will say no more puffer and no more, no more scans, no more x-rays, no more coming to the hospital. Bye bye, Miss Gregory. We never want to see you again. Fine by me. I never want to see you again either. <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed. I have to say, they have been at the hospital. They have been absolutely brilliant. Brilliant service. So, so, so much better than my GP practice. Ah, my GP practice. I've been ringing for the last couple of days for something I can't get through. Nothing urgent, but they love their automated text messages at my surgery. The other day they sent me an automated text message. I was in the garden. Now I laughed at it, it made me laugh, but I was thinking afterwards, that might, that might be a bit upsetting for someone else. So, I'm a woman aged 55. <laughs> 55 and proud. Now as it happens, I'm still getting my periods, not quite there with the menopause yet, but at 55, <laughs> there is, you know, I'm not kind of, you know, getting out there and doing it and doing the jiggy and, you know, making babies. So I get this automated text saying, you know, dear Miss Gregory, we're inviting you to our new, we've got a new clinic, I can't remember the exact words, but it's a new clinic service we're doing. Come along, we're having an open evening, Deirdre. And it's all about long-term contraception. Um, we can talk to you about fitting a coil or fitting, you know, the injected, the slow release, like, it's like the contraceptive pill, but it gets injected, it's like a, and it's a slow release. So I saw this message and laughed and thought, well, I had my coil whipped out a couple of years ago. <laughs> Don't want another one in. Um, yeah, so like I said, I kind of laughed because I thought inappropriate message for me, but never mind. But then I thought, you know, that there might be other women getting that message of my age or even a bit younger who, you know, they may be at a point in their life that they're, I might get emotional talking about this, but they're really struggling with the fact that their reproductive years are coming to an end and that, you know, if they haven't managed to conceive and that's something they desperately wanted to do, that, that their chances are, you know, dwindling every single day and that the last thing they want to think about is stopping a pregnancy, you know? This might be someone who's been desperately trying for 20, 30 years. Just, ah, uh, yeah. Like I said, for me, I wasn't bothered. I found it amusing, but I also, in the same breath, as it were, 
I thought, oh God, I hope, I hope all the other women who are getting this message, incorrect message, I hope they're okay and that it's not gonna trigger something for them because about half an hour later, I got another automated message and it said, Dear Miss Gregory, we apologize for the automated message you received you know, this morning, da da da, we've, you know, some sort of malfunction in our system, please just ignore it. I was like, yeah, that's the problem with automated stuff though, isn't it? It's not, it's not dealing with real human emotions and real human situations. Yeah, I did spare a thought for other lasses that day and think, I just hope that's not a horrible thing for someone to see. For me, I just laughed. <laughs> just thought, mate, I ain't getting it, so it's not an issue. <laughs> oh dear. I think I'd rather be digging a brassic about than digging around into internet dating. You know what, on that note, <laughs> on that TMI note, sorry. To I, am I sweating a bit more now? Uh, maybe, yeah. On that note, I'm going to bid you all a very fond farewell. Whilst I, I've got two more tablecloths to do. Um, I'm going to fling all the windows open to do the rest of this now because I've got them shut at the moment because of noise. But I think, yeah, I think it's actually getting hotter in here than it is outside, so... Let's pop open those windows and enjoy, enjoy this, oh excuse me, just enjoy this wonder of being back with, you know, the vintage linens and all this, all this lovely stuff that I want to play with before I get it to you, one of you. All right lovelies, I will see you again really soon. Um, oh yes, yeah, so another idea for another low spend video that will be coming soon if i if i am brave enough to tackle anything in the garden brassicas or whatever i will bring you along for that too we'll just we we'll just go with the flow whatever happens happens all right lovelies until then until whatever it is is look after yourselves um Try to stay cool. Maybe, maybe don't do any steam pressing on a really hot day. <laughs> this is a stupid idea. I'm just so excited to play with these beautiful things again. Yeah, look after yourselves. That's all. Look after yourselves. Cheerio.